Welcome back to the PowerPoint series of video tutorials from Activia Training. In our next tutorial, we're going to have a look at using animation triggers. Let's start by opening up PowerPoint. And I'm going to open up an example presentation there using animation triggers. Okay, so I've just got three slides on here. Okay, each one of those has a different, uh, slightly different type of uh, animation. Our first one here, a little bit frivolous, it's more of a sort of cartoon. Um, when the weight comes down, it will pivot the seesaw and propel that unsuspecting lady into the hot tub there on the left-hand side. Okay, we can have a look at the animations in the animation pane there. Okay, so there you go, starting at the top, I've got a click event. Okay, and that's a uh, motion path which will send the big weight down and the rest of the animations then carry on from that point uh, let's see that in action okay so wherever I click that's going to trigger the first animation the weight coming down and off the one that goes into the hot tub excellent now on the hot tub itself though, I've got a sign here which says click to fill so the idea behind the animation is for me to click the sign and that will trigger the animation okay so the first item in the animation there is the big weight falling down. So I'm going to select that big weight. I'm going to go to trigger and then on click of the fill sign. And straight away the big weight will be animated when I click the fill sign. Now you'll notice that the, uh, the other animations haven't actually been included in that trigger. Now let's see what happens if I run it at this point. Ah, it all starts regardless without me clicking and that's because uh, all of the other animations uh, are triggered from with previous or after previous so they just start immediately after the transition and well, that's no good to me I'm gonna undo that what I need is for all of these animations to be triggered when I click the sign so I'm going to select all of the animations and then I can go to trigger on click of the fill sign and the whole lot will now start when I click that sign. Let's put the principle to the test. Now, if I click anywhere on here, it's just going to move to the next slide. Uh, I'll go back again, and hopefully this time, uh, there you go, I get a sort of hyperlink finger, click the fill sign, and the hot tub is filled. All right, so there you go, there's a trigger in action. Now, a little bit frivolous that time, let's have a look at... Uh, Perhaps a, a better use of a trigger. Now this time I've got two staff member pictures there. And above a little potted biography of those staff members. Now what I want is for uh, each biography to appear when I click the appropriate photograph. Okay, now on the animation pane you can see the first thing that, that I've done uh, is made both of those text boxes disappear. Okay, so with previous, which is the transition of course, both text boxes will disappear and then on a click event I've got show Jane's text and make John's disappear and then another click event make John's text appear and Jane's disappear okay so in my case when I click Jane's photograph there I want Jane's text to appear and John's to disappear so let's select both of those this time and trigger on click of Jane's picture. So when I click Jane, Jane's picture will appear and John's, sorry, Jane's text will appear and John's will disappear. Now let's do the same for John's text box. I want to trigger those two animations on a click of John's picture. Okay, so the two disappearing animations, they will happen straight away, so we can't see the text, and the appropriate text box will appear when I click the photo. So let's give that a test. I click Jane, and Jane's text appears. Click John, and John's text appears. Back to Jane, and John, and that's not too bad. Okay, once I've got that working, of course, what I may do is position those two text boxes on top of each other like that. Let's move them down a little bit in the center. And let's try that again. And as I click the pictures, 
one piece of text will just replace the other. Quite a professional look. Okay, our final animation <coughs> is actually a video. Now, I've got a video, a wildlife video. This is one of uh, Microsoft's standard sample videos, so you should have it on your computer. And I've just put a text box at the top there, look. Okay, so the wildlife video, uh, that's running um, automatically, so that'll start automatically. Okay, and then I've got a couple of animations uh, for the text box. Okay, so the seal text there, uh, on click, it will appear, and then on another click, it will disappear. Okay, so let's test that. Click, and the text box appears. Add another click, and it disappears. Okay, so where does the trigger come in this time? Well, actually, what I want is I want the text to appear automatically when the seals appear on the video. Now, to do this, what I have to do is, first of all, find the point on the video when the seals do appear. Okay, so I can use the video tools directly below there to scroll through and let's see yep that is the point at which the seals appear now I need to be able to trigger an animation from that point so what we're going to do is add a bookmark let's go to the playback tab and add a bookmark at that point I can then scroll forward again to the point at which the seals disappear uh, we're going to get there in a second and back that's it okay so that is just about the point yep where the seals are going to disappear and I add another bookmark so I've got two bookmarks at the start of the appearance of the seals and the disappearance of the seals right there okay so when the seals appear I want the text to appear so I'm going to select my seal text appearance animation there and on the animations tab trigger but this time not a click of we're going to go for on bookmark of and it was the first bookmark bookmark one so the appearance of the text will be triggered by the position of the bookmark and let's go for the text disappear on trigger bookmark bookmark two so the text will disappear when the seals disappear and let's put that to the test and we run the show, and it appears, and disappears, with no intervention from me. Okay, so there you go. That's how we can use triggers to control our animations. I hope uh, that's been useful to you. I look forward to seeing you on the next video tutorial.